In this lessons episode, you'll discover powerful insights on personal development and the mindset needed to take on big challenges, whether in business or life. The discussion delves into the importance of kindness, work-life balance, and the transformative power of helping others. Learn how to define your own value and embrace your unique strengths to thrive in a competitive world. I want to I want to bring out some uh, some ideas on I guess on personal development that I I can hear that you get very passionate about but I just want to I I still want to get a little bit more of the the tangible legal insight out of your brain before we we go into other stuff so I think that the most you know the 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 most important question would be when people take on these companies yeah what 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 do they even hope to achieve? How can they take these companies on and win? I guess hire you, but outside outside of that, no, no. So it's you know the David versus Goliath sort of um, frame is interesting because today a seventeen year old kid can make a hit song on his laptop with three pieces of software. Okay, a 15 year old kid can make money in cryptocurrency, right? On a level that the traditional bank could never make. So there is an efficiency that exists today through the harnessing of technology, through using new techniques, through being, you know, a good person that will allow you to transcend and annihilate the biggest corporation because they just don't have the, um, the ability to navigate through things as easily with the best results as let's say someone who's more nimble and more agree agree and so yeah. harnessing that allows you to take on toyota because toyota's got 50 attorneys right when there's 50 attorneys on the other side i'm gonna win if i deserve to win because you can't compare one person who knows everything who's evolved to 50 people that are like too many cook cooks in the kitchen you know what i mean yeah. literally that's how we take advantage we can spend just as much money as they spend in doing testing and working up a case. Uh, they can't outspend us because many times these defendants will spend money inefficiently on dumb stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we take on a big products defendant and they spend a million bucks doing something that ultimately isn't even admissible because I know what is and isn't admissible. I know what games they are playing with the stuff that they're doing. So how do you take on big corporations? You appreciate the strength you have and who you are in 2021. Um, the world is now moving away from the old paradigm and the old structures and the old narratives and is way more receptive to the new narratives of you know inclusiveness, of, of, of loving everybody, of letting people define what their happiness is, of not believing this baloney structure that the only thing that's good looking is is you know white uh yeah there's space for everyone to shine you know it's a different world so i think in any profession it's easier to distinguish yourself and sort of be an outlier uh than it was ever before and i guess my because uh, these themes are they're they're so right on but why why are you so passionate about these things besides the fact that it's just good to be passionate about being good and being a better person. But I speak to, you know, just, I speak to a lot of people and I'm sure that they are good people, but they aren't as passionate about the things that you're speaking about. They don't bring them up in discussion. What, what, what was the cause or the trigger? Well, I mean, look, anytime you define happiness by yourself, by what you get for yourself, you're never going to be happy. You, happiness is when you're of service to others. When the circle of, of what makes you happy is larger and you're of service, meaning that like love is not about getting, it's giving. Happiness is not about getting, it's giving. When you, when that clicks in your brain, then you realize the more joy you're going to get in your life by the more people you help. I literally have this sort of analogy of I'm a candle and my job is to light as many candles in this universe as I possibly can. No strings attached, no expectation. I don't get anything other than make the world a better place if i can inspire someone to get to the next level and be happier you know that's infectious it helps the universe it helps uh, my children live in a world that when i die they want to live in and it, it really makes an impact longer than uh your you know your limited number of years on, on this earth 
I mean, that's one thing about music. I talked to people about, about this. You know, someone wrote a song in 1960. They're dead. They sat in a studio with a drummer and a guitar player and, and a bass player, Jimi Hendrix, and they just jam. And that little six minute jam has brought so much joy and like millions and millions of times people listen to that and it gets them through hard times or it pumps them up before the workout or it pumps them up before board meeting or whatever, right? That's the power of music. That's the power of what it is to be human. And so that's kind of transitioning to why I love music so much is because it just has so much power, transcendental power beyond the six minutes it takes to make something. I want to, I also want to, like, I want to unpack some lessons that you've, that you sort of live, some of the values, but also let's talk about your firm because I was listening to, I was listening to another show and you speak a lot about how you run your firm and how you want to reinvest in the people in your firm and how you want them to have balance. All these concepts come from this, like the best way I can describe it is like a mindset of abundance. And that's not where I expected this podcast to go at all, but that's where, you know, that's like your core theme. If I could sort of pin it on one thing, yeah. it's like giving, giving. So walk me even through some of the lessons uh, that you've discovered in your firm, because I think that's a smart leadership, smart management style that it's you sort of incorporate. Manners. You know, it's shocking how many people don't have manners. If you go to someone's house, clean up after yourself. If you go to someone's house, respect the people around there. If you go and meet someone new, don't be small and go, I don't matter. Say hello, be polite. Hi, thank you, manners. And, and you take those basic lessons at home and you put it everywhere you go. When the busboy talks to you, you look them in the eye. When the valet looks at you, you talk to them. When you're in an elevator and someone strikes up a conversation, say hello. Same with your staff at, at work. Treat them like family. Treat them like you would treat them, like you would treat yourself or any other member of your family. The, it, the world doesn't exist for you to exploit and gain them or it. The world exists for you to take care of other people, treat people with joy and love. And the, the outcome of that, the outflow and what comes back to you is good vibes, good mm -hmm. karma, positivity, synchronicities. I have synchronicities in my life that are like mind blowing in terms of, I think of something, I want something to happen. Someone comes along and like, I cut, you know, six months ahead in terms of doing something. Why? Because I'm a kind, loving person. I put good vibes out there. I treat people with respect. I tend to, oh, I tend to actually treat people nicer. If you look at how, what, how I treat people nicer than you would expect, I should or would, but I do it because that's the way I was raised. That's what works. And that's how yes. all people should be. So same with employees. I just believe in work-life balance, not overworking them. I never yell. I'm never disrespectful. I tolerate mistakes because that's part of being human. Um, you know, we have good employees who have been with us a long time. And if you come to my office, you'll see they work because they love to work. They want to make a difference. It's not a job for them. It really is a place where they want to be. The office looks nicer than most fancy hotels. The office provides food and drink, like fancy tea, fancy water, whatever they want to eat. I pay for those things. If they want to take self-help course, I pay for it. If they want to take yoga, I pay for it. Why? The more well-rounded and happier they are as a human, the better their productivity at work. It's like win-win, no-brainer stuff that so many people don't understand. They're misers when it comes to taking care of their employees, and they don't understand they're shortchanging their their potential. I was going to say, like you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. Like when it comes to when it comes to reinvesting in your own people, and I, I was just hearing about when you did an interview on work-life balance and stopping your people from working on the weekends or whatnot, but. If you actually look at the, if you do look, if you run a cost benefit analysis of investing in your people versus even hiring and staff turnover and whatnot, there's some numbers there that you really have to consider. But you know, you you also said it correctly. I, I I'm in alignment with everything you're saying, but many people just miss the mark. Many leaders, many managers, many CEOs found they just miss the mark, um, which is unfortunate. Um, a few other a few other points that I thought were interesting. One of the themes that I was prepping, when I was prepping this interview, uh, one of the themes that I brought out was not letting your past uh, dictate your value and setting your own value. Speak to me about that. It's really simple. Your past is your past. You have no control over it. So whether you did phenomenal or you did poorly, it's irrelevant. Who you be is who you declare you're going to be. If I walk into a room and I think I'm hot shit because I want a $20 million verdict, I'm not going to relate to anyone. They're going to go, this guy's an idiot, a moron. Like, well, he thinks he's hot shit. 
I walk in a room and go, well, I'm a loser because I lost four trials. Again, that's not relatable. What matters is who do I declare I'm going to be in this moment, in this transaction with this human being? If I declare I'm going to be loving, kind, generous, be it. Now, do we fail? Are we sometimes jerks? Are we sometimes ego-based? Yes. Clean it up. If you do something that, that like you go, ugh, why did I do that? Clean it up with the person. Forgive yourself. You're human. Everyone's done it. But don't let your past, whether positive or negative, dictate who you be. Who you be is who you declare yourself to be. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you want to dive deeper into this conversation, check out the links in the description to watch the full episode. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.